People, welcome at the politics watch. This is Sir P. Now, which old case them think we forget and them think buried and forgotten, I got to dig up today. Hold on, people, while I sift through the file cabinet. Let's see which old case I got to pick up. Um, no, not that one. That's for next week. No, no, I think I'll do that one in July. Sorry, give me a second, people. I'm shuffling, I'm shuffling through the, the file cabinet. The, the last case is them think you forget the cabinet. Hold on, people. Aha. Here we go. Patrick Bailey. How's it going? Feeling good? Step to the front of the congregation. People, we have to call Patrick Bailey to the front of the congregation. Because the story surrounding an incident that took place in this man's house is extraordinary. And again, I have to say, the people who believe these kind of stories and the official versions, according, especially according to Patrick Bailey, you are the type of people I want to sell my unicorns to. Please reach out to me. Two for one deal, including a free bag of unicorn show. People, what happened inside Patrick Bailey's house? Well, September 30, 2016. Um, police received reports that, you know, neighbors them called police about them here bawling and all kind of noise over them neighbor yard. That yard was Patrick Bailey yard. See, when the police arrived on the scene, they found the body of a man. That man was called Junior Jermaine. Well, people, to be honest, I've seen his name um, in all different forms. I've seen Jermaine um, with the G, for example, like what you're seeing on your screen right now. Jermaine Jr. I've seen Jermaine with the J. I've also seen Paul Jr. Jermaine. So I don't know what his real name is. I'm going to work with what you see right here on this um, his Thanksgiving service program. Right, but I've seen this name many ways. Right. But the two common, the, the two things that I keep seeing over and over is Junior and Jermaine. And let me just say, whoever planned this man's funeral and all them things, uh, one could one could deal with the man better than this, right? Then picture you want to find put upon this. One could find some better picture, right? I don't know how to find them. You know what? Anyway, let me not, let me not major in the mind. Let me move on to the more important issues right now. So the story goes, in the wee hours of, um, as I said, September 30, 2016, about 4 o'clock, right, this man's body was found in the living room of Patrick Bailey. Objection! Objection! Hold on right there. My name is QC Simple Simon Esquire III, OJ. JP, PhD, BBC, PNP, and JLP. I have every letter behind my name, and I'm telling you right now, this is nothing more than rumors, as Gregory Isaacs said. People, there is nothing here to implicate my client. This man is trying to make up things to get views, and he's just working with ERSA. My client is a big time, uptown, high society lawyer. And if it's one thing history has taught us, is that liars are very honest people and their words should always be taken seriously because they are normally people of impeccable character. I reject these statements and you'll be getting a stern letter in the morning. Well, you need to send a letter to observe and Gleaner because everything I mention is public record. But anyway, he was found with multiple stab wounds and they also found what appeared to be, appeared to be, and later confirmed to be a wrong to the head. Right. People, right away. Man in a man yard, deep hours of morning, one bag of stab wound. We know we're talking about passion right here, so we're dealing with a crime of passion. Just like with the case similar to the politician the down there in Portland. Yeah. Yeah. The, let's just say the story sound very sprattish. Right. I don't know if CIB found any skills on the scene, but this story sound very sprattish. Right. Anyway, 4 o'clock in the morning, them find him, multiple stab wounds, round to the head, etc. Patrick Bailey, the big time lawyer, who by the way is, 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 is the Prime Minister's lawyer, for those of you who don't know that. Right, the person in question today is, 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 is the actual, I don't know if he still is, but at, at that time he was the Prime Minister's lawyer. Right. Say, so, well, he was sleeping. Him sleep through all of this. The one bugger tussling and go on and, and almost stab wounds call and, and, and run will go off. Because imagine people are fight and man a ball to the point of neighbor ear and call police. 
But Patrick Bailey said him sleep right through it. He he was sleeping like an angel. He never hear a thing. The fighting and 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 and, and the holy part, cause when the stabbing was like one, when you them said you man a ball and a big for life and all kind of things. And only did Patrick Bailey not hear that. But he didn't hear a gunshot going off in his house. People at Jamaica, clap your hand. Here's a simple test. Clap your hand in your house. Just clap your hand. Right? And ask anybody else in the house if they hear that. Right? Now multiply that sound by 50, 100. Because you know how much loud a, a gunshot is to a clap. And then try imagine somebody tell you, say, deep down at the night when the place is even more quiet than normal. Them never hear that. That was what Patrick Bailey claimed. But people, that's not the weirdest part of this story. Uh, see, when police pull up on the scene, the police said, and I have to put this on the screen right now because I want the Jamaican people to read it for themselves. People, please look at your screen right now. The police said there were no signs of forced entry and immediately ruled out Bailey as a suspect saying that he was asleep when the killing occurred. People of Jamaica, yard and abroad, on which planet, in which country, hell, forget about real life, which movie have we ever seen police pull up upon a, 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 a scene of crime, have somebody upon the floor, have somebody who did in the yard when this person was in life, and upon the spot, Upon the spot, immediately rule out the next person who did in the same smuddy, the same house with the victim as a suspect. Can somebody tell me even which show them say that you know? I'm not asking if you tell me which real life scenario because obviously that can't be real life. I want you to tell me the name of that show. There. You, a police, you are an investigator and want to be taken seriously and you pull up on a crime scene. Right? Body pan gun, who much wounds? Right, round to head. One other person in the house, no sign of forced entry. So, in other words, the man that tear down the gate and the man that tear down the door. Right? So, the person who did this either get let in or was already inside. And you immediately, on the spot, say, you know what? Yeah, this brother he can't be a suspect. Him saying did I sleep. Him saying did I sleep. So so land. So when you go back up when you go back at BS or whatever, I'm I am i do not know if I think a CIBD manages. So when you go back at CIB BS and you, and, you, and your bigger heads ask a question. So when I have no suspects, you know say um Patrick Billy up there, but you want a suspect still because him say him did I sleep. That's police work in Jamaica. That is police work in Jamaica. That that is the standard police in Jamaica operator. Man said them did I sleep, so we immediately roll them out. People of Jamaica, come on. Unicorns, two for one. Two for one, people. I'm selling them. I see other people start selling unicorns now. People don't buy from them. My unicorns come with all of them shots. And all of them shots. People, the man them immediately rule out Patrick Bailey now. Pan the spot you now. Then the comedy gets even worse. Because after that, come a road now and people start saying, so if you rule out the man immediately. Bring him in back. People, Patrick Bailey run go down to the doctor go tell the doctor say I'm sick. Say he can't move. You know how much pain and him suffer. Doctor write him off and say listen, when you can't interview him because he come to where I say he mash up and he need he need much time off. People, this is real life me telling about. This is real life Jamaica we are talking about. So police couldn't even get back to him. They couldn't get back to him initially, right? Because as me say, because him go say or him feel bad and him not feeling well and him and him, and him feel like him not gonna make it and him get put on the bed rest. You don't know legally, police can't trouble him again. Remember you know, people, Patrick Bailey is a lawyer. Patrick Bailey know the system. Patrick Bailey know say once him go to get a medical paperwork to say yeah, him in that condition, eh, then he can't come for him. Certainly don't have to leave him alone. People, police never get to talk back to him again, right? Until weeks after weeks after you know people and then to make things worse patrick bailey claimed the man was a caretaker he was a caretaker that's a patrick bailey claim even though the man had actually um fly out go america become a citizen in america and was back in the country he was visiting jamaica 
when he lost his life. Right. The man family come out and call out Patrick Bailey and say Patrick Bailey know the man for at least 20 years. At least 20 years. Right. Patrick Bailey must have do some case for the man back in the day. Right. So people, don't you think the police will be able to trace back and know say well this case, Patrick Bailey did deal with this case for this man right, 20 years ago. These are public records. They know that. So how the police make Patrick Bailey tell them say, the man a caretaker like say, really know the man like say. First of all, caretaker in the living room, 4 o'clock in the morning, people of Jamaica talk to me now. People of Jamaica, caretaker, in your house, 4, to 4 o'clock in the morning with you, and you're in there, upstairs asleep. Alright, it get worse now people. Oh yes, it keep getting worse. Right, because I want you to understand this. The observer went as far as to try and dig up some information. And Patrick Bailey, right? Because you know, in Jamaica, we have one of those Mickey Mouse Freedom of Information Act thing, right? Where you can go, um, I forgot what it's called, um, the, the, the National Securities Access to Information Unit, right? You can go up there and get to the information. People, it's supposed to be like a Freedom of Information Act where citizens and certain people can go up and get certain, uh, dig up the government and get certain information. Now, in some countries, once you file it, right? After a while, the government have given in, right? They might be like, for example, a two-year period or three-year period. The one we have in Jamaica is Mickey Mouse thing. Real Mickey Mouse thing. See, when um, Observer try to get certain questions answered, they were denied. Observer sent 11 questions and they only got one answer. People, look at your screen right now, please. Now, as I said, Observer sent 11 questions to the Access to Information Unit and I have to commend the Observer for this. Right, this is the kind of investigative work we like to see be um, we like to see being done in Jamaica, especially on cases like this and people like this. Right. Now out of the eleven questions, they got a response saying only one question will be answered. And that is number one. So question one was answered in the people. But hear this. All other questions touch on and concern matters that could either endanger someone's life, prejudice the conduct of the investigation, or reveal methods of investigating or dealing with matters arising out of the incident. People, this is how them use, this is the strategy them use to prevent people from hearing the truth. Either endanger someone's life, who for life, Patrick Bailey life, what we are talking about that People, it's called the access to information. Let me ask another question, the people who come up with this access information thing. When a normal person I will testify against a criminal, don't them life in a danger? What do you mean we well, can't release information because it could endanger someone's life? But every, every time you talk to the police, you endanger your life. Every time you deal with the police in any way, shape, or form, you endanger your life. You're not going to endanger your life. Right? So, what do you mean? Or oh, them can't tell people that. Or it might prejudice the conduct of the investigation. People, this is a cover up. That is a fancy way of saying this is a cover up. You were sent 11 questions and you only answer one. And as you can see, the reason why them can't answer them questions are because them questions would have implicate and really make you know what I go on. Right? Because, and again, big up observer, these are very serious questions. Right? I love, especially when they start from number three. Right? Was a test done on the said bullet? Right? Because maybe the man they probably have licensed fire or something like that. Alright? Run the ballistics. But as I said, access was denied and the information was not handed over to the observer, so the people remain in the dark. Now, I want you to listen to this. This is what Patrick Bailey, the big time high society, uptown, big shot lawyer, had to say when people, when he was challenged by the observer regarding this thing. Here. Listen to the man say, people, and I quote, Anything them say, make them say it. I have no answer. Just publish whatever you want to say. My back is broad. I have no comments. No comments. No comments. Just simply, you report whatever you want to. End quote. People, I don't know, for some reason, I just picture him, picture him and ring up his neck while he must say that. You know, like back in the school when, 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 when Pitney and Cousin and ring up their neck. That's why I vision him saying that. People, this man is a big shot liar. Suppose, I'm guessing. Um, he is one of the most, one of the top ones in the island, considering he's the prime minister's lawyer. I don't know. I'm just saying, this man is accused of something like this. You would think this statement to him release would be, you know, more, I don't know, 
poised, more polished. Right. This sound like a 87 attack. This sound like um like like some like some rude boy attack. Like yo, any, anything I wanna say, anything I wanna say, yeah. make them say that I have no answer. Yeah. Like <laughs> people don't realize when these people are pushed, you know. You see, but you don't realize in Jamaica, enough of these big shot people with too much titles and all that, when them get pushed and them back against the wall, the 87 of them come out in our people. The 87 in them come out. The Teggy Reg in them come out. This is the response to the man. Anything them say, make them say it. My back is broad. Like, come on, man. You're supposed to be a lawyer. That sounds like something one talks from Klansman that I say. Anyway, no people, the lawyer in question here, Patrick Bailey. He seemed like this man saw it like the sea out of Israel. Right? Man saw it like the Dead Sea. Because. He's been caught up in several spooky incidences. He beat a fraud case, right, where he was accused of, of missing up some money um, with a man known as uh, Stafford Dixon, right. They had some dispute over a land deal where the man alleged that between 95 and 97, um, Patrick Bailey sold a 22-acre property in St. Catherine on behalf of um, the same Stafford Dixon, right, and the land was developed into a housing scheme. But then Mr. Dixon claims uh, he did not benefit from the sale, right? Anyway, them go court and Patrick Bailey win the case. As a matter of fact, they, they submitted a no contest, right? And, and, and the, the judge agreed and Patrick Bailey walked away, right? But in 2017, Uncle Sam, yes, even Uncle Sam and, and Patrick Bailey and things, Uncle Sam stripped Patrick Bailey of his visa, right? Now, apparently this was surrounding the whole carousel thing, right? But people, listen, Patrick Bailey, a name has been around several incidences, several spooky incidences. But you see him as if he's Teflon, nothing can stick, right? Hey, forget about John Gotti, this is the Teflon done right as well, right? Nothing can stick on him, right? And people, understand this. The police even went as far as the whole land per man from the Umbrella Gang. Right. And for those of you who don't know, Umbrella Gang come from out of um, Newlands and Portmore. Right. And they were saying that two people who were linked to the gang were taken into custody. Right. But basically, they might try to say, are them two money responsible for taking Jeremy and Junior's life? However, when they carry the man them, and them run fingerprints, it turned out the fingerprints did not match those from the scene. The man them from Umbrella Gang were innocent. Right. People wanna see that? The man then reach all the way on Newlands in a Portmore. Gonna pick up two stragglers, right? Two eighty sevens, ready for throw a case upon them. Ready for throw something upon them. But then of course fingerprints never be. At least at least what's this say? Cause what I'm getting here is that the force split in a two. It showed me say one to the officers one did the right thing. But the bigger heads them now push the case even further. Because you see if this was the whole JCF I try I try um cover up for Patrick Bailey, they would have tried to sink the umbrella man them. But them carry them in, run fingerprints, and them say, listen, let go the man them. The man them innocent. Right? People when they say how far them are going to try to sink somebody. Remember these are the same the same police, big big wigs, right? What what decide to say Patrick Bailey wasn't even a suspect. Now them reach all the way on new land to two man, right? So since them have fingerprints on the scene because it's it say the fingerprints taken did not match those from the scene. Alright, so fingerprints did they? Other fingerprints apart from Patrick Bailey and Jeremy and Jr. did they? So tell me something people. No forced entry and other fingerprints on the scene. All we have to do as investigators is ask Patrick Bailey who else did in the yard. This is your house, Mr. Big Shot Lawyer. Right? People we are interrogating now, like say, him in the interrogating room, and I may interrogate him. Mr. Bailey, there were other fingerprints found here. Tell me, since we carry the umbrella on them and another film fingerprint, right? Since we send up on wild ghost chase. Tell me, who else is in the house? And if you are going to tell me, say, you don't know, charge of a drop pain right away. People, I'm wrong or I'm right. If you are going to tell me, say, you don't know who is in your house, right? 
you don't know where them fingerprints could have possibly come from. People, charges dropped right away. Right? Because at this point, Regin, if I know you as somebody you know wanna cover up for. Right? Who for fingerprints them there? Right? And since them have fingerprint, which is solid evidence, that means that all them have to do, once a man named Carl, bring him in and say, yo, room, run your fingerprints. But look like not even that gone. Because if that gone, if that gone, man will get sink. Man will get sink because we have solid evidence. People in Jamaica, there is solid evidence there. Fingerprints there. Right? And I'm assuming them run patchy belly fingerprints because you never know. You never know. Hey, who knows? Those fingerprints could be... Well, you would live in the house anyway, so I guess you would have a right to have fingerprints on the scene. But I'm guessing the fact that they might match fingerprints show me it's not Patrick Bailey really, because they would expect his fingerprints to be in the house. Right? But you never know. This case is just too spooky. It's too spooky. Right? The man them reach all the way on Newlands and Wallamp a man. Fingerprints. Right? But them let go the man. And if that ego court, the man them about the case anyway. The justice system is shaky, but it's not that shaky. Right? Trust me. People, we need to know what I want. This case needs to dig up, right? Because we notice that uh, it keeps selling under the radar. The, the, the farmer here at CIB, um, Elon Powell, right? Every time they ask him, he always assures people, listen, no cover up, no go on. That because he was the Prime Minister's lawyer, don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of it. I know we can't hear nothing, right? This case can't just go so. This case can't go so because we can't have people like them, yeah? Feel say, them can do what them go and do, and not come out of it. The DPP say, nobody is above the law. Well, there you go, ma'am. Miss Paula Llewellyn. There you go. Here is a case where you show the Jamaican people say, nobody is above the law. Because since police are go up on the scene and instantly decide the man is a suspect, right? and then I go take, and then I go um, go on all the way to Newland, so man, to see if I them did Listen. Paula Llewellyn, DPP, this case right here, in my opinion, if you turn something out of this case, right, if you deliver, if you sink the people in behind this case, I would, a matter of fact, I would add you a picture to the politics watch. Um, uh, you know, when you go on the channel page and see the big picture of the lion, I would add Paula Llewellyn's picture to that, um, that section right there. I will remove the lion and add Paula Lewis in the picture because she would be even tougher than the lion. She would be even rougher than the lion. If Paula Lewis, knowing full well, said this is a high society cover up corruption case, right? We're talking about 116, the highest level possible, right? If Paula Lewis push through pressure and get something out of this case, I'm putting Paula Lewis's face as, 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 as the banner for politics watch, and she would have deserved it. I would have. I would cancel every other mistake and every other wrong thing she's ever do and put her on the face. I'm not impressed when some 87 gets sink. I'm not impressed when some 90 gets sink. Come on. Cake walk. These are the cases where the DPP earn our salary. These are the cases when CIB and all of them big fancy organizations earn them salary. These are the cases the Jamaican people are going to see and say, Rati, did them really hold on at the big heavyweight man there? No man, Jamaica, take a turn. These are the cases you want to see. Right? And let me tell you something. You see, if you go out, you go find a little poke and throw charge for him. You can call you out. Because there is no forced entry. But before I go out, I just want to say this. People, I've heard every rumor you can hear surrounding this case. I've heard all kind of names, call and this and that. People, when you deal with them 116 cases, uh, if you not gonna reach out to me, please drop something solid so me can drop a bombshell. There's no point telling me a rumor I've already heard. I've heard all the politicians' name, I've heard all the big wigs name, I've heard all kinda of, listen. If you're gonna send me something, please send me something solid so me can drop on them people here. When I deal with them people, you need something. If I'm gonna do a follow up on this, it have to be something for drop straight on them at Right, with the case Afi dig up and put back on the front page. Right, so don't bother. Is there a piano assembly? Yeah, me hear that too. Right, but anyway, people, I'm handing this over to the DPP. Father Llewellyn, there you go, ma'am. Step to the front of the congregation. Now is your time to shine. Patreon squad, big up on yourself. 
please like, comment, and share the video. Bless.